Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper here with a quick Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make the snare enhancer rack. However, it is free for download right now on my blog. Links in the description of this video if you just want to go download it. This particular version does require Isotope Vinyl. This is a free plugin from Isotope. I'll leave a link to it on the blog. Uh, so you got to just go click through to, to get it. But you can also use Ableton Live's vinyl plug. I just think Isotopes is a little bit better. Right, let's go ahead and listen to what it does. Essentially, it adds character to a snare or really any percussion that you want or really anything that you want. But it just uses a gate and stuff and a couple of cool effects to add some character. So let me just go ahead and play what it does. So you hear what it's adding there? If I go ahead and just solo the effect. So it's like a really wide crackling sound, which by itself sounds kind of poopy, but once you add it to a snare, it really brightens it up and adds a bunch of character to the snare itself. And what's really cool is it's more or less automated once you dial everything in. So if I come in and choose a different snare, for example, like this one, come in, warp, loop. Mm, mm, mm. And it, it generally works better with uh, snares that are already pretty short. If you have a really long snare, it might take a little more finessing to get it to sound better, but. And what's really cool about the rack itself is we have quite a few controls just from the uh, eight macro knobs here. So I can adjust release time. That way it's a little bit less apparent or we can make it super long. And we also have some EQ controls. So if you solo it, it kind of has too much mid range. You can roll it off right there, super easy. There's also a high shelf to kind of give it a little bit of a boost. And there are a bunch of effects here. I've got uh, an overdrive effect. And any one of these effects at uh, the total left position at 0%, in this case it's at one hertz, uh, the, the effect is off, so it's completely off. And then we got a character changer here. So as you can see, you've got quite a range of possibility and that has nothing to do with if you want to get in and jump in and actually tweak this stuff. As you can see, I've got quite a, a bunch going on and obviously you're going to have to side chain it no matter what. So if you, load this track anywhere you're gonna to have to side chain it to whatever you want to be triggering the gate to trigger the sound itself and then you can come in and you have your threshold adjustment and stuff like that and you got your return you got your attack I left it fairly large or fairly long about 30 milliseconds and you can see it right there um, that's because the transient of the 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 clap or the snare, you usually want to leave that alone because it's already going to be pretty high uh, in the gain range there. So letting it pass by before adding extra sound to it is generally a good idea. You might even bring it up even more, especially if you have a bigger, fatter snare or if you're adding this to a kick, for example. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and just save it. Uh, snare Enhancer, like I said, you can go download it from the blog. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But I'll show you how I made it. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And what I did was downloaded that uh, Isotope vinyl, dropped it on a channel. It can be an audio channel or a MIDI channel, doesn't matter. And what we need to do is make the sound from here.
I don't know, something like that sounds pretty good, but we're gonna manipulate that sound, but that's like the bass sound. And what's cool about it is it's relatively random. It's pretty steady for the most part. In another video, I'm gonna show you how to do this with uh, an actual just sample inside the sampler. It works the same way though, so you can use your imagination, but uh, using the vinyl is just pretty straightforward, so that's what I did. And the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and add the gate to the channel because otherwise, it's just gonna keep running and we don't want that, especially when we start manipulating the sound. So let's go ahead and add the gate. And we're gonna side chain it to the snare, which is on audio two. And here we go, that's the signal. And if we turn it on now. Okay, so uh, the other thing that's really cool is now that I stop it, it's not gonna play anything even though the audio is coming out because the noise isn't, well, there's no nothing triggering the threshold for the noise to start, so that's cool too. And the next thing we wanna do is add an EQ because right now it's just got too much low end, so EQ8 right here, and you can see in the spectrum here, it's just poopy. So I'm gonna do a roll and just go ahead and do a high shelf. And remember, we wanna turn off these frequency nodes that we're not using because they take up CPU even though you're not using them. And this is a good idea to control A and then control G to group them. And then we can start adding like the controls here for the low uh, cutoff to you know number two and the high shelf gain to uh, you know number four and maybe the frequency of the high shelf to number three and then we have a bunch of controls here so I'll come over I'm just doing this really quickly but that's a good start and what I did was jumped on the gain uh, or grain delay rather and just chose what was it like low low tone flutter and it gave it more of a random fluttery sound and I just brought it way over here in the top uh, top right corner. And that was just giving it a little bit of character and you might wanna map some of these parameters or just be aware that they're there. That's pretty cool. And the next thing I, I would do is add, I don't know, you can really do anything at this point in overdrive if you want before or after the, the EQ8. And then you'd wanna add two other th really important things. One is the limiter at the very end, so you're never gonna clip. And you, I always map the gain of the limiter on the macro to macro eight. And I also took a utility and boosted the width up to about 120. And that way, again, it's pushing that middle centered audio out of the way for the snare to take up that space or occupy that space. Uh, this is just meant to complement the snare. It's not meant to take its place. So it's a good idea to give as much room and space for that snare uh, as you can. And we gotta come in and let's just boost it up to like six for now. And of course we want to map the release And there you go. Um, obviously, we also want to map the uh, mechanical noise to a macro. So that's right here. Where are you, mechanical noise? It's right here. I just map that to macro one. And then you just want to add whatever effects you want. But that's essentially it. That's all I'm going to I'm going to stop there because I think this video is already way too long for what we're trying to accomplish. But that first one I made, I put a lot more time and effort into it and kind of went through a bunch of the different uh, effects available inside of Ableton Live to make it. But as you can see, it definitely makes it more colorful and adds more character. And I just think overall sounds better wanted to share it with you oh the other thing i forgot i hope you're still with me <laughs> is you want to turn the floor all the way down that way when 
the threshold is passed on the way back, it's going to go back to zero. So there's not going to be anything floating through. If we turn up the floor, we can actually start hearing that sound. We want it to be down at zero. And of course, there's a guy that's going to sweep the floor outside of my door right now to uh, make me stop this tutorial. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Peace.